Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are now watching the telecast coming to you from Prayer Temple of Love Cathedral, where I, your humble servant, St. Richard A. Smith, is a pastor and organizer. We invite you to be a part of our services. Call a friend, call a neighbor, call a relative, and call somebody and tell them to stay tuned to this telecast right here on this station. Like you educated too on this morning, amen. 12th verse. Read, that, read the 12th verse for me. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that, for which also I had apprehended of Christ Jesus. Read 13 for me. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do know, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Read verse 14. I press towards the I mark. I press, I do what? I press towards I the I didn't mark. just walk. I press. I didn't just crawl, but I press forward. Read on. I press towards the mark for the price of the higher calling of God in Christ Jesus. Bless you. Sit down. Sit down. I, wanted, I want you to read that. Because the Spirit of the Lord told me to have you read that to the congregation because it will not only be a benefit to you, but it will be a benefit to every person in here. And I want you all to understand what that word said. Brother, I count not myself to have been apprehended, but by the power of God, I was chosen and I refused to sit down. I will press on. On for the higher calling of the Lord. I ain't me. I don't have nothing to do with me. But there is a unique spirit that dwells in me that's able to do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I'm talking word now, y'all. We sit around and we mope and we moan about what we ain't and don't know that God has anointed us and blessed us to such a high degree to where we can lift our hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Press. Church folks stop pressing. They go to church. They get up on Sunday morning, and if the whole women, if there's a hole in this stock, they they lay back down because they don't want to press. But I tell you, in order for God to bless you, in order for God to use you, you're gonna have to press your way because the devil ain't gonna let you just do what you want to do without putting pressure on you. If you don't believe he'll put pressure on you, you get in touch with Jesus. Forty days he stayed in the wilderness on his way out. The first person he encountered was the devil. His disciples were not there. The high priest was not there. But the devil was present. Present because he had him at a state to where he felt. I could get him where I want him now. He's hungry. You know how y'all get when you get hungry? Some of y'all do anything to get a biscuit. He was hungry and he came out. Uh, uh, up on this rock. Would you turn it, praise the Lord, into bread? Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then he went a little further, he asked another question. He said, i tell you what you do. I don't want you to get behind me. I want you to get hinder. That's further than behind. That's way back there. And when you get way back there, get on way back there some more. And that's what you got to tell the devil. To all of you that are going through something today. I know the day is Father's Day and I'm getting ready to bring a Father's Day message because I want to talk about Abba. Some of y'all don't know Abba, do you? Huh? Y'all ever heard of Abba, Father? Abba? Hello, somebody. Somebody said, it's pron I pronounce it different, Abba. Well, you can call it Abba, Abba, whatever you want to call it. It's A-B-B-A. -B -B -A. I'll spell it for you. Now, most of you don't even know what that means. And you've been reading it? 
at one point, Jesus, I want you to post for me on the board, St. John 1, 12, and 13. It's not on? Oh, that's okay. Don't worry about it. You got your Bible. Post it in your mind. You ought to know it already. If you're Bible students, you're supposed to know what it said. Right? St. John 1 and 12. St. John 1 and 12. Got it? Okay, I'll read it for you. But as many I received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed upon his name. Gave them power to become the sons of God. Which was born, not of the blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but of God. Praise the Lord. I have a question I want to ask you this morning. What do it mean that God is our Abba Father? Anybody know? Okay. The scripture. In the scripture, there are many different things names to describe God. I talked about Jehovah God. I talked about Jirah, God Jirah. I talked about El Shedi. I talked about all of these different names for God. And just a couple of weeks ago, I preached about names and they said certain names like Isaac and, and Abraham. And they all have different meanings, praise the Lord. But these some of, I got some young folks in here. Most of you old folks, I can tell you what your name means because I know it. But some of these young folks, they have not printed it yet. Oh, my Shehisha. Whoever named a black child, oh, my Shehisha. And call yourself going back to Africa. Y'all going back to Africa. I wasn't born in Africa. I was born in these United States of America. This is my home right here, and you can't send me someplace that don't belong to me. Them folks in Africa don't want me over there no way. <laughs> and if y'all if put Mr. Trump in, he got a ticket for all of y'all. He said he, he passed out tickets for anybody who want to leave. And he don't care where you go. He didn't tell you to go back to Africa. He said his sons, his, his son said, we don't care where you go, just leave America. Scary, ain't it? But that's all right. You don't have to worry nothing. God's still in charge. No matter who sit in the White House, God is still in charge. Praise the Lord. Listen to this. God, uh, uh, God, while all the names of God are important in many ways, the name Abba, Father, is one of the most significant names of God, understanding how his relationship is to his people. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm not going to stop here and read all this. I'm going to talk a little bit about it because I want to do what I want to do. The word Abba is an aromatic word, and they use most frequently for daddy. Y'all with me now? Uh-uh, daddy. Now, I've got a son sitting over in the corner. When he talks to y'all, he talks about my father. Yeah, yeah, my father's pastor over there at Pratt Temple Love. He's all over town talking about his father, the pastor of Pratt Temple, St. Richard A. Smith. That's my father. But when he wants something, he calls me daddy. I got another one in here. Do the same thing. It's pop. Hey, dude. What's up, dude? 
But when she wants some, hey, dad, I said, uh-oh, my pocket's been to get emptied now. When as soon as I hear the word, hey, dad, Dolly wants something. And guess what? 99% of the time, if I got it, she get it. He may not get it. I send him to his mama. But when Dolly asks for it, 99% of the time, she get it because she just called me daddy. If you want to get to my heart, if you want to get to your father's heart, call him daddy. Jesus. Y'all don't know how big a role Joseph played in the life of Jesus, do you? Joseph was Jesus' adopted father. Are y'all with me now? Some church folk, I ain't talking about you Christian folk, y'all have accepted the fact that Jesus was the conception of the Holy Spirit. What God got in Mary's womb because God's able to do anything. Huh? If he called El Melchizedek to be born without a mother and without a father, he ought to be able to bring Jesus here with a mother. Hello, somebody! Because if y'all don't recognize that, you're cutting God short. And God's got all power in his hand. He had the power to do anything he want to do when he want to do it. That's why I call him my daddy. When I want something specific, when I want to get somebody off of my back, I say, Daddy, when I want folks to stop lying on me, when I want folks to stop mystery, I said, Daddy. And every time he'll come to my rescue, I'm a living witness that God will get folks off of your back if you call him Daddy. And I want you all to understand something else too. Every human being is not God's children. They are God's making. They are God's creation. But they are not God's children. The word says, as many that believe on him shall be called the sons of God and they're given power. You think you strong, you ain't seen nothing till you get born again. The moment that you find Christ in your life, you have a new daddy. You have, the moment you find God in your life, you have a new daddy. And you become what? Heirs. I say you become heirs to the kingdom. Co-heirs with Jesus. In other words, whatever belongs to Jesus belongs to you. And I heard him when he said, I and my father are the, woo, watch it now. But when he got ready to pray, he said, Abba, 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 Father, which means that he was very angry. You see, when you go to him now, you go out of fear and a need. But Jesus was angry that night because he had trusted in all them folk and every one of them was, le was, was letting him down. Uh, but as I hate to say it, y'all might need to put your trust in Somebody beside church folk. Ch church, church folk will let you down. And make you mad too. Sometimes I get so mad up in here and I say, Lord, he said, that's all right. You be still and know that I am God. Because if I'm with you, I'm more than any of them folk down at Pratt Temple Love could ever be to you. Because I am your daddy. Joseph, Jesus is daddy. Got the word Mary. Mary said, angel came to Mary and said, Mary, you getting ready to, you, God getting ready to use you, girl. He, he found a pure woman. <laughs> had never been touched by a man. Ain't going to get in her womb. And you know them folks in Jerusalem and up in Nazareth and, 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 and uh, 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 in, in uh, 
and all them little old places around there, you know they were gossiping then. That boy Joseph finna get married to that girl Mary, and they and she pregnant, and he ain't they ain't married yet. And Joseph was really getting ready to let her go, but God met him one midnight. Y'all better wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord, and He shall renew your strength. Met him at midnight in a dream and said, boy, your wife, your, your girlfriend, the one that you espouse to, in other words, the one you engage to, is getting ready to bring forth me a son. So Joseph said, all right, if this dying will, Lord, that's what I have to do. And he adopted Jesus. So Joseph became Jesus' adopted father. And not only that, but he protected him. He looked over him just like as though he was his own son. Because he, he, he protected him. Huh? He was born in a manger. And the word got out, praise the Lord. And they tell me that the three wise men came. Because King Herod had sent out to destroy all boy babies. Come on, somebody. So they hid him in the manger. And then Joseph got him and fled the country. Got out of town with him to raise him. Most of you, some, not most of you, I'm going to have to take that back. Some of you so-called papas and, and fathers won't even go visit your children, much less get them out of town. <laughs> Left mama to raise these babies. Got her acting like a man and a woman. She's supposed to be the mom of the house, not the man of the house. <laughs> we have, when you become a child of God, you develop a new relationship with God. You become adopted into his family. I am grateful this morning for the fathers of this church and those that are fathers that are visiting with us. I'm looking at some fathers in here that raised children that were not biologically theirs. Are you with me? but they treated them just like they were if they were the biological father. And the only reason why they treated these children like they were there, they loved the child because they loved the mama. And you can't love the child if you don't love the mama. Come on, somebody. Oh, you can misuse. Uh, you can do this and use people up, but in order to love the children, you got to have some love for the mama. And when you do this, your child will have respect for you. Your, I ain't going to even call him your stepchild. Your, your, your spiritual child that you raise will have respect for you. And all you fathers, see, it's a privilege. It's a privilege to be a father. But it's an honor to be a daddy. I don't mean to be negative, but most of you men have the ability to, you know, but y'all don't carry through with it. After pregnancy, you're gone. I said after pregnancy, some of you don't even go to the hospital. And definitely won't visit after prep because you and will stay away from social workers too. But if you listen to me very carefully, if you call yourself. 
help daddy, part daddy, whatever kind of daddy you want to call it, then you have to show forth a responsibility toward that child. I may not have been the most educated father that there ever been through the city of Detroit, but I'm looking at some people can attest to the fact that Ricky, darling, never had to want for nothing coming up. I was there every day to pick him up from school. I was there every day to make sure while his mama was away working, I was there to make sure he had food. I remember one day I cooked, man, I laid out a dinner out of sight. Green, purple herb peas, hot water, cornbread, candied yams. I made it. He come home. He said, Dad. I said, what you want now, son? I said, wash your hands. He said, Dad, can I use the car a minute? I said, where you going? To Burger King. I said, if you don't get in there and eat that cornbread and them pinto beans and stuff, I got the bomb will go upside your head. Dolly never had to wait at school. When school was out, I was there. When she went off to Eastern, when she called me, I'd quit whatever it was I'd doing, I'd go there. She, 30, she just turned 32 or 33 and still act like she was when she was 15. That's Dolly for you, though. And got nerve enough to go bring me in Clara Bailey. I thought when I stopped taking her to stop, Ricky, Richard, where is he? He's supposed to be back there soon. Richard Perry, you in the house? He's supposed to be back there somewhere. Anyway, I thought when I got through going to Oak Park High, picking, I, said, I got it made now. I didn't realize that my work just begun. And because I am a good, I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you like it is. Because I am a good daddy, a good granddaddy, people look to me and expect me to do things that most folk won't even ask another man to do. I want you daddies and you papas, you fathers to be the same way. <coughs> Take charge of your family. Take charge of your children. Don't let them grow up to be a nobody. It's important that you be a father in the house. Mother's all right. Mother will prepare. Mother will feed. Praise the Lord. Mother will change diapers. Mother will wash clothes. But you need daddy there for guidance and powerful experience extreme uh, 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 example and be a great mentor to your children. Whatever you say, hold fast to it. Talk to your daddy, isn't it? You ought to be able to crown yourself with some wisdom. My daddy left me when he was 71 years old. I was a grown man when he made his transition. But I remember when I was a little boy, five years old. I'm going to go back here one more time. Y'all have to put up with me because I'm just about through. But I want to share this with you. To just to show you the kind of daddy that I had. My daddy was a sharecropper for years, and then after that, we had our own farm, and we, shared, we had to work on the white man's farm to raise stuff over there so we could make end meet because there were 12 of us coming up in the household of love and care for one another. Oh, yeah, we loved one another. We didn't fight and kill one another. Like, you can't get three folks in the same house today, somebody going to the hospital with a gunshot wound. But we stayed right there. And I tell you something else we didn't do. We didn't let nobody else mess with my sisters and our brothers either. We stuck together because daddy taught us that. 
Mama didn't teach you that. Daddy taught us. Whatever you do, boy, that's your sister and that's your brother. And don't you let nobody mess with them. And he walk away and leave it just like that. Walking down the road one day. Now we'll forget this. Old lady dead and gone now, so I'm not going. God bless you. We hope you have enjoyed watching us today. We hope that we've been an inspiration to you and your family and friends. You may call us for prayer at area code 313 at 865-6156, telephone number. Praise the Lord. We are located, again, as I said, at 12375 Woodward Avenue. Our service is each Sunday morning at 1130. Praise the Lord. Bible study each Wednesday night at 630. We invite everyone to come out and be a part of all of our services right here. Remember, God loves you. Jesus loves you. And so do I. My name is Mike Duggan, and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching Bell Global Network. Hi, everybody. I'm telling you, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turrentine, AG, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times, and you are watching Bell Global Network. What's going on, y'all? It's Mr. Bell. Some know me as Anton Quarboy Bell. Others know me as Elder Anton Bell. I am co-CEO of Bell Global Network, VGN TV 2090. And I want to invite you right now to get your own broadcast. I'm calling all ministers, all politicians, all business owners. Get your own broadcast right now. Starting at $99. And if you have an idea for a TV show, we can bring your idea to reality. We have packages available that include production and facilities. Also, we have advertising packages starting at through those $25. So don't hesitate. Give us a call at 313-355-7877. Once again, that's 313-355-7877 to make an appointment today. You never ever let me down and when I'm sinking and sin, you never ever let me drown. You're my life, girl, my security. You took my insecurities to put me in the lion's den and took out all the fear in me and gave me a limit to undeniable faith. In your arms, I'm safe and for that I give you praise. My soul says thank you. My soul says thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm telling you, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turrentine, AG, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times, and you are watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan, and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie, watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching Bell Global Network.